Good morning. So I'm first going to tell you a little bit about myself and my background and how I got involved in this project, establishing a salamander monitoring program in Acadia National Park. I came to CUA with very broad interests, and during my first two years here was trying to um, integrate them together um, into some kind of focus. I knew I was interested in science in the natural world, but wanted what I did to have a more applied nature, such as conservation or education. Um, I always had an underlying desire to share the natural world with others, especially children, and thought that by uh, um, giving children outdoor experiences and allowing them to explore the outdoors would lead to more of a conservation mentality. In the fall of my junior year, I took the Maine Woods Monster Course, which had four faculty teaching eight students um, with three classes. And though the classes had distinct titles, they were all integrated together and actually combined three of my main interests. Experience in place and education, applied amphibian biology, and conservation policy of the Maine Woods. This class was really important for helping me to better understand the value of broad perspectives, such as science is important for informing policy, and that experiential education and a sense of place can lead to conservation. Through class projects and field research, I was able to further integrate my interests and find value in my focus or lack thereof. The final thing this class did was introduce me to the amazing world of amphibians. Studying amphibians allowed me to further integrate my interests to between science, conservation, and education. Due to their physiology and unique life history, amphibians are currently being studied as bioindicators of environmental degradation and climate change. They also make good educational tools, as most children can find them in their backyards, and I assume most of you caught frogs when you were younger. One field aspect of the Applied Amphibian Biology class was collecting data for an amphibian survey that Acadia National Park was piloting. The Northeast Temper Temperate Network was started by the National Park Service as a monitoring program that parks and historical sites around the Northeast use to monitor and preserve ecological resources. Forest monitoring sites are set up throughout the parks and other biological surveys are conducted in conjunction with these sites. Terrestrial salamander surveys were also included at many of these sites across the country. The last 25 years has seen declines in frog populations, especially in the tropics. However, most studies are post-mortem studies, and scientists and conservationists want to do more surveys now so we can better understand what are actual population declines and what are, pop just, um, what are natural fluctuations of populations. In 2008, Acadia National Park piloted their own terrestrial salamander monitoring program. In order to monitor populations through time, Acadia National Park employed a cover board study. Pictured here is one cover board out of 100 that were laid out in the forest and checked each month for salamanders residing underneath. Most of the data was collected by a dedicated volunteer and one field season by my class. Because of lack of resources, this project did not move past the pilot stage. The need for new energy and commitment inspired the work of my senior project. My senior project advisor, Steve Russell, received funding from the Rothschild Fund for faculty-student collaborative research. While I took on establishing the monitoring program, Steve's future classes will conduct the fieldwork, thereby providing valuable data for the park and enhancing their studies with actual hands-on science. For my project, I took on these four goals create a volunteer handbook and data collection sheets, put together salamander monitoring kits, create a salamander monitoring device, and set up a second cover board site. The first goal was to make a volunteer-friendly handbook that would introduce students to the cover board survey process and explain how to collect good data. This will be available online for volunteers to download. The picture here is a piece of one aspect of the handbook, which features step-by-step -step guides to collecting data and a species list of what volunteers may encounter. Since I was writing the handbook for volunteers, specifically COA students in field courses, I had the current Applied Amphibian Biology class field test my handbook and give me feedback. So here's some students collecting data. Because measuring small salamanders can be hard, I developed a salamander measuring device to make that easier. And here's a picture of it. And the final aspect was the establishment of a second coverboard site uh, to make the current survey more robust. 
So the dot indicates where an established forest monitoring site was, and then um, 50 meters away is a rectangle where the current cover board site was placed. I made and labeled 100 cover boards and then laid them out in the forest. And here's me laying them out. <laughs> and um, this project initiated an important collaboration between Acadia National Park and College of the Atlantic and will hopefully provide more important information about salamander populations and inspire volunteers to become more actively involved in amphibian conservation. Thank you for your time and thank you to all these people. Could you see this be extrapolated to middle school students? Yes, actually there's um, part of the Northeast Tempert Network in Vermont, they actually have a middle school collecting all the data there. Um, it's a pretty good s survey for that because there's actually, you know, it's pretty hard to make mistakes because they're either under there or not. Um, but because of the school here, we've just done it with COA students, but it has been done. Yes? So the question is how many salamander species there are um, in the park. And so I know there's about eight or nine species in Maine, and I think the park is lacking one or two. But this survey is just looking primarily at redback salamanders, and they're, there's a pretty large biomass of them. There's a study done in uh, New Hampshire that found out that at peak um, breeding season, the salamander biomass was equal to um, that of small mammals. <laughs> 